Hello. Oh, hello, hello. Welcome back to Lotus Reverie. First Nexus. Oh yeah, ah uh, yeah, baby. So, we got our first heart with the love of my life, Columbine. Woo! And we will be continuing on from there. I don't know what's gonna happen, but uh, probably nothing. <laughs> What am I saying? Anyway, let's continue, let's go! Oh boy! We still have to do this? Then let me get this straight. You peer under the table and pull Columbine off from under there while doing your best to explain yourself in a dull, monotone voice. When I got here, you were stalking me everywhere. I haven't forgotten that time you even snuck into my bed. All to learn more about me and catch me off guard, disguise a simple curiosity. Columbine's nervously nods. But then you decided to become my friend after killing me, to kill after trying to kill me, and that fake curiosity has turned genuine. So now you're just straight up stalking me through and through? Columbine nods again, bobbing her head repeatedly like a little bird. In fact, you've been continuing to escalate the to weirder and even more perverted stuff every time, which has been pretty jarring to say, to say the least. I mean, I understand you following me around, but do you really need to duel everywhere when, when taking pictures? That face is so nice. You start to worry she's gonna snap her own neck with the sheer quantity of nodding she's doing. You do realize that this is weird, right? As in, not remotely normal? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that everyone sees your behavior as suspicious? Yes. <laughs> and that this behavior does not benefit either of us in any way, especially if we're looking to build a friendship? Yes. <laughs> Could you stop? No. Well, at least I tried. That's it. You understand Columbine better now. Life in the castle of Slum Columbine is interesting. You don't really talk much with her, but... During lunch, there's Columbine. In the courtyard, there's Columbine. Reading, there's Columbine. In the toilet, there's Columbine's blue puddle. When going to the city, there's Columbine. There you are, Columbine. Playing basketball game. Putting all your passion and sweat into the last point while you remember your faces of your friends and those who supported you during the last 342 chapters. Oh, you look so cute even when sweating packets sink. The girl manages to make you fail and lose the match, and that's how your dream of success dies, together with the national tournament. No, wait, not that last part. All jokes aside, it's even more interesting to see how, she, how she's not always like that. This sort of bull behavior only happens when you're alone. Next tournament, we should allow for magic, for the sake of maximum fun. I think we should make sure people learn the rules first. I'm pretty sure tackling belongs in another sport. When the others gather around, the girl dis just disappears. What may be going through her head, I wonder. You understand Columbine better now. Hello, 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 uh, you, do you have a moment? Huh? I just, I just wanted to talk as companions, nothing else. 
neither of you nor anyone else in the castle can believe what's happening right now. Columbine just sat next to Ruin, who's currently in the middle of greeting him cordially. Sink, tell me right now what exactly is going on. How is it possible that those two are, talk are talking? They're supposed to be in the loner weirdos. The loner weirdos. I think this is my fault. Columbine wouldn't stop following me around, so I told her to bother someone else. Which somehow told me it uh, turned into me allowing her to do anything she wants if she managed to have a normal conversation with someone else. But what madness is this? Do you know what this means? Hey, I never imagined she would try to talk with Rue. She clearly had the option to try someone more approachable like Violet or Helio. If they clash and get out of fight because of me, the castle's equilibrium may. This means I need to be not what the. Bring. This means I need to bring out the batting hat. Who thinks they'll get along and who thinks they'll land out in a disaster? You think this is an appropriate moment for batting? Oh, you're right. You should have told me beforehand so I could have prepared something bigger. I don't know why I even bother. But I'm betting it will turn ugly. Aha, uh -huh, so you yield. There's absolutely no possibility this could end in any other way. While Rose goes around the room gathering bets from those present, the awkward and embarrassing scene between Columbine and Rue continues. Um, I would like to get to know each other better. Rue merely watches Columbine with dull, seemingly lifeless eyes. Meanwhile, the ruckus surrounding Rosemary's betting on shop only goes louder. Where, for example, can we talk about our preferences or something like that? The man furrows his brow. His answer is cold and categorical. No. No. Um, and what about something else? What do you do before the incident? No. And then... What's your opinion on Sink? You want to interject when your name comes up, but the bad things shop won't allow external elements to interfere, so you are forced to stay silent and keep listening. Everyone pays close attention to the ways Rue's expressionless face looks up before he gives an, his answer. She's a terrible cook. She's a terrible cook. That actually worked? And that's all he has to say about me? Ah, uh, that's too true. Oh, she also has a terrible sense of direction. When I follow her around, she sometimes takes a thousand turns to reach her destination. If she was following me, she could have... She's a brute. She's a brute too. She always leaves the training grounds in complete mess after using it. Her behavior is very tomboyish, yes. And she loves machines. Like cars and stuff. Not very feminine. Not, ver not very polite either. Well, whether, whether you're talking or eating. And very careless with her clothes. Her robe sometimes smells, and that's what hard taking into consideration how I always keep a prudent distance. What in the world is happening right now? They're dragging you over the coals. But, but I thought she stalked me because she... Looks like you lost not only the bet, but also your pride and dignity. That's what you get for taking things for granted. By the end, Columbine and Rue are nodding in unison and exchanging strong handshakes in solidarity. That's, that it's specifically those two doing this is what sickens me the most. You understand Columbine better now. You understand Rue better now. Let's do a main event, sharing secrets. After the incident on the walls with Columbine, she seemed to have increased, increased her stalking of activities to a whole new level. When you stop in your tracks, you, she follows suit. Without even looking back, you feel like calling out her name. Columbine, could you tell me what you want wrong? The girl doesn't answer. When you finally decide to turn around to look at her, 
She looks surprised, pointing a finger at herself. Are you asking me? Not many other columbines around here, am I wrong? Me? Of course. Columbine somehow is tense and terrifying, but you know her well enough by now, so they remain unconcerned. Her reaction switches from one mood to another, as you just wait it out until she's finally able to speak up, her voice trembling. Could we... Um... Could we talk? In your room, if you don't mind? The girl covers her face with her hands. Probably because you're frowning so hard, she worries you're gonna make her explode with the sheer force of your anger alone. It's nothing weird, I swear. It's just... 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 Columban grips her wrist, twisting her around several times as he searches for the perfect excuse. To reinforce our friendship, eh? You turn around and start walking away. I'm... I'm serious! The girl blocks her path and ex with extended arms, but she quickly loses that burst of determination and her figure shrinks as she stutters an explanation. Be because we're friends, right? That's why I want to... How do I say it? Exchange information? Get to know each other better or something? Not sure if you follow. Chit chat. Exactly. You plotting something? Nothing bad. Her creepy smile does not help her cause. And why in my room? Why not yours? No way, no way. My room is a disaster. Impossible. No, 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 no. Columbine's nervous and forced gesture leave you with no other option. Okay, whatever. But you better have something valuable to say. You won't regret it. Let's go. As soon as you agree, you start to regret it. Well, it's not like it could get any worse than this, right? You remain motionless in the center of your room, silently observing Columbine playing around with your furniture, your clothes, and the few other belongings you have. But that's not even the scariest part, no. The worst part is that she, Columbine is... She is... This room is so, so cute. Oh my god, I heard it. Columbine is beaming. It says a lot about your personality and your taste. It's minimalistic. You could even say it belongs to a guy. Don't you think you'd enjoy some more colors beyond those white and gold? But like, whatever you prefer, girl. I still think it has great potential. You can feel your eyes widening with every passing second and you blink continuously to make sure it isn't this isn't a dream. It's a really clean room for sure. That says a lot about your personality. I'm jelly. My room is is a disaster? Something like that. Who are you and where did you put Columbine? Uh, what are you talking about? I'm just looking around. We're friends now, right? You draw an intimidating knife. And as friends, we shouldn't keep secrets from each other. You draw two intimidating knives. I'm just saying what I truly believe. You draw 17 intimidating knives. Oh my, did I say something wrong? Not technically, but... But it doesn't feel natural, right? Too much of a contrast, I would say. I wasn't lying though. I do want to learn more about you. Don't you realize how weird that sounds? Why? Isn't that what everyone does? Learn from others? Copying uh, copy from others? You're missing the context here. So what? Ah. Let's be realistic here for a second. The clarity behind your actions. That confidence despite the situation we're trapped in. Come on, don't compare us. 
I think it'd be better if I were more like you. What are you even saying, Columbine? I'm not stupid. We are all affected by this situation. And I... I don't even know what I'm doing or what I should do. I feel like I'm just drifting through life. I tried to kill you. Splash. Smashed by the river of the other rocks. I would have done it for real without blinking an eye. But you didn't. Because you knew what you had to do. I'm not even talking about having ideals, or goal, or any of those idiocies. Uh, idiocies. The issue comes when we encounter all kinds of amazing people, all with their unique stories, full of noble aspiration and great challenges. I can't fool anyone. They're all better than I'd ever be. But why would I care? Huh? Why would I care? In the end, everyone dies because that's what happens in this absurd game. And what do I have when I, my turn comes? Should I just shrug and ignore all the people I killed to make it here? I would love to have some backbone, at least some fortitude you have until I, oh, I have find my own answer. So sometimes, just sometimes, I think it would be better if I just give up and clear way for it, the way for another. If my time has come, why not go out in a way that's with it? Not a bad plan, right? Columbine sits on the edge of her bed. She does not look at you. No, she can't look at you. And you use me as your example? An amnesiac girl who knows nothing? I don't even know what you find so great about my personality. Comparing myself with the others, I would say I'm just a hindrance. And what do you think my real personality is like? The charming but boring girl from a second ago? Or the repulsive girl with suicidal tendencies to just ignore everyone ignores? I don't think your attitude is an issue right now for anyone, Columbine. Especially considering the heavy burden everyone already carries on their shoulders. But if that's what worries you, then I'm considering, then considering I'm in a similar situation, why not we both find out together? Lombine squeezes her eyes shut. Her mouth opens with suspicion as she lets herself fall back on, th on the bed. You and your sweet words. I wouldn't be surprised if you really were popular with guys before. You've won me over for sure. I think I'm gonna ignore that comment. Oh, come on. Wouldn't you enjoy my company? There's enough space here for the two of us. That's my bed, so don't get so comfy. <laughs> I was just joking. Columbine jumps out a bit after taking the pillow as her hostage and changes the subject. Oh yeah, I promised to exchange information, didn't I? I have to tell you something interesting as thanks for allowing me to come here. As an, and as an apology for the other day. You say you don't know where you came from, right? But I have an idea. A theory that would make sense. But you have to promise not to share it with anybody. You raise an eyebrow at first, but as the second passes, you end up nodding, accepting her proposal. As you already know, our group has already investigated everything on the side of the river. There's only one bridge standing. The one in front of the castle. We also have all kinds of security and surveillance systems set up along, all along the river. Excessive and useless busy work. But it's not like I'm one to complain, huh? Nobody really believes you've been continuously sleeping at the hospital up until now. But what if you manage to cross the river without anybody realizing? Columbine grows increasingly excited as she talks, her face getting so frantic that she takes up pauses between her suffering or her occasional laughter. There's a passage to the west, not that far away from you, beyond the hospital. It's perfectly hidden, thanks to the sewer system that runs below the river. If you check it out, you may remember something. There's an issue, however, a small detail that I think you would be better off not knowing. Why are you telling me then? Because I'm not sure if there's a possibility it could help you out. That passage is locked with the password. And you know it? <laughs> yes. But don't you think it would be better if I don't tell you? 
If you manage to remember it by yourself, it will prove that you've used it before, right? Or I could remember it as soon as you tell me. True, however, I'd rather not say. Unless, of course, you are willing to answer something in exchange. Columbine timidly uses the pillow to partially hide her face until you pull it away from her to look directly in her eyes. What questions do you want to ask me? I will decide if I want to answer after knowing. <laughs> oh, it's so tough. I love it. It's nothing. I simply want to know your opinion. After our time here, who do you think is human or topa? Her eyes open wide, analyzing every detail of your expression. I don't know. I have no idea. But you probably have your own guesses. If you are forced to select one or the other for each of us, what would you say? Let's start alphabetically. What do you think about Helio? Human. Aha! And Rose? Human. What do you say about Rue? Human. Pistol? Topa. Good old Violet. Human. I've already asked this, and I know you don't know. But if you had to guess, what do you think about yourself? What do you think you are? Topa. And me? What do you think of me? Human. Columbine's face moves closer and closer to yours with each question until a white grin stretches across her face with the final question. Happy? Satisfied, the girl nods and shuffles back to leave some breathing room between you two. Do you want to know the password then? No, there's no need. You know what? I don't need it. I'll do as you said. Eh, but you answered all my questions. You could have told me before. Never mind. We thought we needed to bother for everything. We are friends after all, aren't we? Columbine is visibly astonished. She takes a step back and covers her face in embarrassment. Are you okay? It takes her a while to react, but after a few moments of her inexplicably vibrating on her phone, she goes back to her usual self, her smile only a little creepier than usual. Better than ever. In any case, thank you for having me here today, Sink. I hope you weren't too bothered. Better than usual talking, so then the story is an improvement. Uh, don't worry about it. I won't do that much. It's just that... It's nothing. Forget it. Thanks for the hospitality. I won't bother you anymore. The girl is slowly and carefully checks out the room before finally heading up to the door. Wait, Columbine, what are you about to say? I won't get mad if it's something you're worried about. The girl shrugs and tilts her head to the side, confused. No, you see, it's just... Up until now, I thought that meeting people wouldn't really bring me grief. Considering the time we have left, making friends is just... Huh. That's why I did what I did on the wall. Cutting out freely before I was too late. Friendships are destined to end. Perhaps in the hands of that other person, or by my own very own hands. The girl's hair ripples in the wind and rushes in after she opens the door, allowing you to see her full radiant face, happy and free, bidding farewell in her own unique way. But you know what, Sink? If it is you, I think I wouldn't mind one bit. And there in my dream. Alright everybody, that marks the end of our seventh episode. This is so taking so long. I didn't know that it would be taking so long. This episode has been long because I wanted to read more, I guess. Who knows? Anyway, comment down below what you think of this episode and suggest some things that you want to see me playing. Like if you like sub uh, dislike if it is like subscribe for more content like this and I think that's all thank you for watching and have a good day